Good morning everyone, we are in Ambon and it's before the sunrise. We are preparing the boat and I'm feeling pretty nervous. Hi everyone. We are about to set off from Ambon to Alor. It's a 350 mile passage. Weather doesn't look too good, but yeah, here in Ambon it hasn't been good for about five days, so we're getting sick of it and we're just gonna go. Weather forecasts are saying it's gonna be a fast sail. It's gonna be beam reach, 20 something knots, a couple of meters of swell, and uh, we're probably gonna be flying along and bashing around a bit. But anyway, join us on this uh, two day crossing. It should be about 48 hours. We should be able to do 100 and 60, 170 miles per day, so uh, we'll, we'll crack through this short crossing pretty quickly. And we'll try and keep Marie uh, from being too scared. Looking forward to getting a stack pack. Get rid of this bloody sail cover. It's, it's sort of percolates in this bay, I think. I'm hoping we get, it's about seven, eight miles that way, we'll get out to the open ocean. I hope things are gonna calm down a bit. Obviously there'll be swell, but it's, it's been really stormy in here for five days now, just rolling through. A bit uncomfortable, but uh, hopefully we'll get some sunshine out in the ocean. So, you ready to go? Uh, don't have really the choice. <laughs> no, we got to go. So, it's Marie's first passage, really. We did one the other night, but it wasn't really, uh, it was just a short one. So, this is two days and two nights. Well, probably three days and two nights. And yeah, she's a bit uh, nervous and a bit scared. And it's going to be a fast one, but um, yeah, we're prepared. We got food ready. The boat seems to be good. Um, yeah, we're ready. I'm gonna throw off the mooring boy now and get going. Oh, what an ugly mooring rope. And smelly. Oh, wait. Wow, look at this. Oh, I'm sure there's gonna be enough waves flying over the boat in the next day to clean it all. That's good. All right, let's go. So we're actually motoring out of the bay. There is enough wind, but it's really twisting around inside this bay. They've got the second reef. Got the mainsail up with the second reef in, and we'll probably stay with the second reef the whole whole of this crossing, I guess. Uh, just because the tear in the sail is on the first reef, and I won't want to run with full sail up with this much wind that we're going to have. So I'll probably run second reef and a bit more of the jib. But we'll see. But I'm actually motoring out of this bay. As I said, we've had shitty rainy weather here since, well, I've been here four or five days and it just hasn't stopped raining really. So batteries have been getting a bit low. Uh, so just using this opportunity while the water's flat to motor for an hour. Once we round this point over here, we'll be pretty much directly straight out in the ocean. Just now, and uh, yeah, we got 20 knots on each 
exactly on the beam ridge. This is our course now, pretty much straight on it and uh, this is probably what we've got to look forward to for the next two or three days. So we're doing six and a half knots now. We need to do a 7.2 knot average to get there at early morning to give us time to find an anchorage. So we're going to have to put a bit of speed on but it uh, should be good. Imagine hitting that thing in the middle of the night. It's not a hardwood tree, it's a massive big palm tree of some sort, but yeah, sort of things that you go bang in the night. So we're well underway now. We're about, uh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine miles off the coast. Um, yeah, it's just settled in. We've got 24, 25 knots of wind at the top of the mast, so a little bit less down here. We're doing uh, eight, eight and a half knots. Um, yeah, there's a one and a half, two metre swell running. Pretty much all what the forecast said. And yeah, we're just running good. We could be going faster. We've got quite a bit of reefed sail up, but um, this is still faster than our average we need. So we'll have to slow down the night a little bit if we have this all day. And yeah, just cruising. How are you feeling? All right, we're about five, six hours into this now. No, a bit more than that. I think it's about two in the afternoon. We're uh, been flying along, uh, sort of dodging squalls. We're about to get hit by one though. Over this way, this one. Then all around behind me is all squalls. I've just reefed down a bit because now we're at, yeah, 35 knots of wind. Well, we've got good, good boat speed. We've been sitting on eight knots pretty much, so it's pretty much above our average we need to do. And yeah, all comfortable. Marie's downstairs chilling and uh, not feeling sick so far, so that's good. And we'll just keep moseying on. Weather is crazy. We've been battling the whole day. Halfway through the night it went to 35, 40 knots, pretty much straight on the nose. That slowed us down a lot. We were uh, reefed right down and but 
going straight into big swells and it just was bashing us and sort of got through six or seven hours of that yeah about an hour ago it came around more on the beam and let out some sail and started going along again good good uh, speed and then just here out of nowhere two minutes ago it was 22 knots and we were doing eight knots and it was perfect and then boom 48 knots flattened us we're all the way to head sail now and we're just doing yeah well we're still doing six knots just with the main but well having enough of this it's just uh, not giving us a break Marie's been down in bed feeling crook the whole time and I've been getting some sleep up here in the cockpit but it's been raining and oh, it's not making it easy shit second morning and uh, final morning of this passage it was a pretty good night cruising along pretty well wind dropped off for an hour or so but uh, and then I thought it was done actually but then I was picked up nicely again we're doing seven and a half knots we've got about 18 19 knots of wind I've actually got the engine running maybe you can hear in the background it's just idling away uh, it's running a bit low on batteries yeah, we didn't have much sun on this passage as you could see so they're getting a bit getting a bit empty with the autopilot having to work hard they were about 62 percent or something before so i started the engine up just to just to boost them up don't want to damage the batteries by running them too low um, marie's still feeling pretty crook she hasn't really been up uh, in the last 36 hours really been giving her some food and drink and uh, some travel calm tablets she's all right but she's not enjoying this passage that's for sure um, it's the longest one but also the roughest one we've had so I don't know she's been brave hopefully she puts it behind her and uh, won't put her off too much she's looking forward to arriving and putting the anchor down and having a steel platform to sit on that's what she's looking forward to uh, but yeah it's all good I feel sorry for her but um, it's the joys of sailing a small monohull I guess anyway We'll get back to you when we arrive. sitting here in front of a tiny village that I don't yet know the name of. We arrived here yesterday afternoon after finishing our little passage and uh, we've just woken up now having our first coffee and feeling much better. How do you feel this morning? Uh, much better too, really less tired and it's really a beautiful place to recover. Yeah, it was a pretty wet and wild trip as you could see a lot of water flying over the boat and uh, although we don't really have any leaks everything still gets moist and uh, wet inside after a couple of days like that but we're drying everything out thankfully here it seems to be a pretty dry and uh, sunny place 
It's not quite as warm, which is really good. We slept good, it's a bit cooler. What are your feelings now after waking up and uh, what are your feelings on the, the, the your first two-day passage? It was better than the other ones, but it's still a, a hard moment for me. Like the, the first 24 hours was okay because the weather was good and the sea was pretty calm. But the last day, I think I was tired, a bit hungry because it was not comfortable to eat correctly. And uh, yeah, uh, I was not really feeling the, the last day. To be honest, it wasn't a very good uh, example of a two-day passage for Marie. It was pretty tough. I don't know, I didn't film too much just because I was sort of on my own in the cockpit and it was pretty rough. Well, we didn't have any really optimal conditions to be honest. It was pretty tough. We had a we had another 50 knot gust. We got sort of knocked down a little bit and held over by the wind for a while until I could sort things out. I filled up the head sail and got a balloon in it. And uh, yeah, so we got sort of held on our sides until I fixed that out. I had to unfurl the whole thing to clean it. And so the wind caught us and took us over. And luckily Marie was asleep at that moment. You know, the boat did perfectly as it always did. Broke nothing. I hope you can hear us. The boats around here are crazy loud. Anyway, yeah, the boat was uh, fantastic as always. Not even a shackle or a rope broke, nothing at all. It just kept plowing along. Autopilot just did most of the work. I actually uh, steered for about four hours yesterday, I don't know, the day before evening, right in, up until it got dark. The batteries were running a little low and, and then I started actually enjoying steering. I was sort of steer up and down the swells and get up to 10 11 knots and then back over a wave and then down again it was sort of like racing it was pretty cool that got me through a few hours of you know not thinking about being tired but anyway it was pretty good passage when we got here you sort of quickly forget is that how it is for you not exactly <laughs> <laughs> no no but that's okay uh, anyway i'm proud that you did it and yeah that was an experience I think the good things to take out of it is that you weren't scared, you weren't, she wasn't crying out like get away, I hate this, I hate this, it was just, she was feeling bad, feeling sick and weak from not eating properly and maybe that's my fault a bit, I was turning downwind when she needed to go to the toilets but uh, you know I probably should have haved to a bit, you know a couple of times and cooked something proper but the thing was just trying to get to this channel at the right time because of the tide there's a huge current to get into this bay and I was fixated on getting there be, you know before high tide if the tide had started coming in we would have been sort of screwed and so I didn't want to slow down didn't want to stop and yeah it, it made an impact she got quite weak towards the end and uh, but yeah she hung in there she was good she didn't didn't complain at all and I'm proud of you for that and, um, oh, and I start to trust really correctly Sheila and now like yeah that's I'm amazing. feeling safe inside. It's just like I can't get out because I'm feeling sick, but when I'm staying inside, I'm feeling okay. <laughs> and you know what made her sick the first time? She was she was doing a watch on the first night, and uh, flying fish came aboard, and it was flapping beside her, and then it was so smelly, she automatically had to vomit, and then from there it sort of went downhill actually. Yeah. <laughs> she got more and more sick, but. But well, you only vomited twice on the whole trip. Yeah. And it was a pretty gnarly trip, so like, pretty proud of her. Anyway, she didn't book a ticket back to France yet, so that's a good sign. Okay, so well, that's the end of this video. Uh, next week we're gonna have a video discovering this area. I don't know what there is to discover. We're first gonna have to go and check in and see what the vibe is with the whole COVID thing. But um, I don't know, it seems, I've got a good feeling about this place. We're just gonna work our way west now. Uh, you know, it will go through Flores next and then um, Sumbawa and into Lombok and Bali over the next few months, depending on what happens with COVID. Yeah, because obviously everything is still closed, borders and everything. So I'm not sure we'll be able to get up to Malaysia this year, but we're just going to keep going as far as Bali and then see what happens. Thanks again, patrons. The feedback from the last couple of videos has been really, really good. Thank you all very much. Uh, really would be struggling to do this now without you guys without having any work lined up for the future. So um, really, really appreciate all your uh, support there. Okay, thank you and uh, see you next week. Bye bye. You can get these on the website too, link in the description below.
拜拜。